Welcome VacLab Reviews fans. And today I have a product for you that I actually bought myself. I have a bunch of these things. I got it from officesupply.com. It's something a lot of you will recognize. Get it out of the box here. It's a surge suppressor battery backup by APC. And I have seven of these. One I gave to my son. So uh, I let him take one to help back up his computer. He had the um, 850 VA model. And this is my second 900 VA model. Some people think that 900 VA means 900 watts. Nope, it's 480 watts. But it's more than that. If we look at the timings right there, there. So BVN 900 M1. So if you have something that uses about 10 watts, which they claim is like a network gateway, then you'll get like six hours. But if you hook it up to a computer, I mean, something that has a little bit of power to it, but not a big powerhouse, 180 watts there at the bottom, mid-range PC, you'll get about 15 minutes. Well, how about we go and set this thing up, get it charged, and try something a little bit different. How about, oh, I did, I sliced that one open already, that's good. How about we set this up, get it charged, and see if we can find something that uses, well, close to 500 watts, and run it, and see how long it really lasts, because I've never actually tested it with maximum power. I'm personally going to have this back up upstairs, my um, LCD TV, but also um, my internet uh, gateway modem. More emphasis on the internet gateway modem, just in case the power goes out. I don't really have the power go out a lot where I am here in Ohio, but we do get weird um, over voltage spikes and also under voltage, you know, kind of like what's referred to as, as brownout, but an under voltage condition. So I'm going to show you how to set the sensitivity of this particular item. You have three sensitivity levels. Oh, now I need my, uh, my little box cutter. You have three sensitivity levels you can set and it sets the range in which this will respond. And I always set mine to the most sensitive you can set it to. I mean, why not? You know, why have it be less sensitive? Set it to maximum protection mode. Okay, so it says here, you know, you have to hook up the battery when you take this thing out of the case. There, turn product over. Connect battery. Yep, it's what you got to do. So I will peel that off. And <laughs> it does leave, it leaves some stickiness in there. So we'll have to kind of <laughs> wipe that off. You think they could do maybe a little better job? It comes off, but yeah, there's some goo in there. So how about I change the camera so we can get a better view of what's going on here. All right, that's a little closer. So let's see what we got here. Battery connector. Okay. And I guess you do this. And then, you know, this is different than what I'm used to. I'm used to taking the back cover off or some cover off and then putting some, um, you know, two plugs in there. This is more convenient. So... Look at this. It was set here like this. I just go ahead and, you know, pull it up, as the arrow says. And then it looks like I'm going to just plug this down. Oh, click. Okay. Does that, does that go all the way in? I had to push down hard. Yes. So you have to push down so it's completely flush with the bottom. Yeah, if it's sticking up uh, above, you know, uh, flush, 
you haven't pushed it all the way down. And you can't make a mistake by, say, turning it around one way or another. It only goes one way. Okay, that's the new way of activating the battery. And so far, I, I like that. Now, what's so neat about this? Okay, what do we have here? So, battery plus surge. So, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. They have different spacings. So that's for battery backup and surge protection. But if you have something that draws maybe more power than, well, 480 watts or total more than 480 watts, you want to go and plug into the surge here. So if you have something like, say, um, I have my speakers and my speakers can pull a bunch of power and I would rather back up, say, my computer that also uses a few hundred watts, my speakers, I don't really care if I get battery backup or not, I mean, if I lose sound, so what? But I definitely want to keep my computer running. So we're looking at a total of nine, I think they call them NEMA outlets. And also, you have a 5 volt, 2.1 amp, up to 2.1 amp, uh, you know, USB um, A plug. And you can use that to charge your Android, Apple, or other devices. But it's not a high voltage output, but it's a high current output. See right here, battery wiring fault. If that should, let me get that for you to see it. If that should ever turn the color, it probably turns red if there's an issue. And then here's a circuit breaker. That one's a pushable, resettable breaker. On the other side, you just have some airflow. The bottom you've already seen, but I'll give you another close up all the way along. And you have this nice cord. It's short, but it's angled. And I really like that because when you plug into an outlet, it plugs in at a 45 degree angle. So if it were to plug in down like this, or, you know, like say straight up like that, it could block other cable connections. This is a 45 degree angle and I definitely appreciate that. I do have the unit plugged in. I'm going to push and hold, so it's going to be a little hard to see, the power button for about 10 seconds. You really have to hold it down until you see it start to flash. There we go. So it's rotating colors. Might be a little hard to see, but it currently says it's red, right? Whoops. I see you got to do it a little faster than that. So let me get it back into adjust mode. Okay. Now you see it's flickering around. So I'm going to push it. There you go. That's amber. I know that's hard to see. That's green. You can easily see green. That's red. There you go. That's actually now flashing amber. That's where I want it. And then you just leave it there and there it goes out. Okay, so when we next go and turn it on, normally turn it on, you know, just push and hold for a second. Now it comes on, great. So it likes everything, it clicked, that should go solid. And now what we have is everything set to its maximum sensitivity. I can't emphasize that enough. So that amber light is what I want. And I have a bunch of these that I've used since 2010. And boy, do they ever work well. Now, as far as longevity goes, I tend to get maybe seven or eight years out of one of these things. And then to be honest with you, either the electronics or the battery itself goes, and then I don't repair it. I just go and get another one. So this comes with a three-year warranty. They last way beyond the warranty. As it so happens, I looked around my 80 plus vacuum collection and I found an old eh, early 1970s Hoover U4007. Let's see how much power it pulls. Is it less than 480 watts, including the light bulb?
Well, it seems to be around 440 watts. So I wonder, once I get that APC charged up, you think it'll last five minutes running this 128 CFM golden oldie vacuum? Huh. Let's find out. Place your bets. How long will this last? Hooked up to the APC 900. Hmm. Let's find out. Now unplug. It's blinking red, it doesn't like it. Now it went back to green temporarily.
it. So it's off. Here, just to show you. So what do you think? A battery powered Hoover U4007, at least for a few minutes. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.